Okay, we are, um, let me bring my notes up. Uh, section 8.4, changes in mechanical energy for non-conservative forces. Now, before we considered non-conservative forces that affected only kinetic energy of the system. Now, suppose the book on the surface is part of a system that also exhibits change in potential energy. Let's say like it's uh, sliding down a ramp. Uh, in this case, the FKD equals the change in internal energy due, due to decrease in mechanical energy of the system because of the force of kinetic friction. Uh, as an example of the book moved on an incline. Uh, there's change in both kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy of the book earth system. So the, we have delta K, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy plus the change in internal energy all equal to zero. Uh, so let's look at an example. A three kilogram crate slides down a ramp. The ramp is one meter in length and inclined at an angle of 30 degrees as shown in the figure. The crate starts from rest at the top and experiences a constant friction force of magnitude five newtons. The crate continues to move a short distance in the horizontal floor after it leaves the ramp and then comes to rest. Uh, use energy methods to determine the speed of the crate at the bottom of the ramp. Uh, now, let's conceptualize this. I mean, you imagine the crate sliding down the ramp in the figure. Uh, the larger the friction force, the more slowly the crate will slide. Um, we identify the crate, the surface, and the earth as an isolated system for energy with a non-conservative force acting on it. Um, now let's look at delta K. I mean, uh, oops, let, let's see. Uh, let's analyze this. Because V initial equals zero, the initial kinetic energy of the system when the crate is at the top of the ramp is zero. Uh, if the Y coordinate is measured from the bottom of the ramp, the final position of the crate for which we choose the gravitational potential energy of the system to be zero, with the upward direction being positive, then Y initial equals 0.5 meters, half a meter. Uh, write the conservation of energy equation for the system. That's the delta K plus delta uh, UG plus delta E internal equals zero. So that's the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy plus the change in internal energy equals zero. Um, substitute for the energies. Well, the kinetic energy was zero at the top, and it's all velocity at the bottom. The potential energy was max at the top, but is zero at the bottom. And then you have the force of uh, kinetic friction times the distance. All of those added up will equal to zero. Uh, now let's solve for V. V is equal to 2M over Mg Y initial minus Fk D. And let's substitute the numerical values. And you see that uh, given the values that they state at the beginning, we get 2.5 meters per second. Okay, uh, how far does the crate slide on the horizontal floor if it continues to experience a friction force of magnitude five newtons? Well, uh, this part of the problem is handled in exactly the same way as part A, but in this case, we consider the time interval from the moment the crate begins to slide at the top of the ramp until it becomes, until it comes to rest on the floor. Write the conservation of energy equation for this, for this situation. Uh, delta K um, plus, I think that's delta U plus delta E internal. Uh, I hadn't noticed that before when I was making my notes, uh, but I think it should be delta U. Um, let's see, uh, substitute for the energies, noting that the crate slides over total distance, ramp and floor that we call D. Okay, and there for sure, that second one is a delta U uh, gravitational because they substituted MGY. So notice, we're talking about it starts at rest, it ends at rest, so we're not concerned about the kinetic energy in between. So we have both uh, the initial kinetic energy and final kinetic energy equals zero because it's, we want to know how far it slides once it comes to rest. And the change in kinetic and the change in potential energy is just the going down the ramp, the 0.5 meters. Um, and then the internal energy is FKD total. Okay. Um, 
now subtracting the uh, oh so if we do that if we uh, substitute the values it gives 2.94 meters total now subtracting um, the one meter length of the ramp gives us 1.94 meters that the crate slides across the floor so solve for the distance d total and su substitute numerical values oh we did that um okay now for comparison you may want to calculate the speed of the crate at the bottom of the ramp in the case in which the ramp is frictionless also notice that the increase in internal energy of the system for the entire motion of the crate is fkd equals five newtons times one meter equals five joules this energy is shared between the crate and the surface each of which is a bit warmer than before also notice that the distance d the object slides on the horizontal surface is infinite if the surface is frictionless frictionless is that consistent with your conceptualization of the situation well that's what uh, uh galileo discovered in his early uh experiments okay uh, now a cautious worker decides that the speed of the crate when it arrives at the bottom of the ramp may all may be so large that its contents may be damaged therefore he replaces the ramp with a longer one such that the new ramp makes an angle of 25 degrees with the ground does this new ramp reduce the speed of the crate as it reaches the ground now what do you think because the ramp is longer the friction force acts over a longer longer distance and transforms more of the mechanical energy into internal energy the result is a reduction in the kinetic energy of the crate and we expect the lower speed as it reaches the ground so let's find the length of d of the new ramp sine of 25 degrees uh, is equal to uh, 0.5 meters over d which would be the the hypotenuse and d is equal to 0 0.5 divided by sine 25 degrees is equal to 1.18 meters now let's find the velocity we substitute the values um and v is equal to 2.42 meters and the final speed is indeed lower than in the higher angle case what is the speed in the higher angle case 2.94 2.94 is greater than 2.42 meters per second okay um now let's look at a uh, block and a spring a block having a mass of 8.8 .8 kilograms is given an initial velocity va of 1.2 meters per second to the right and collides with a spring whose mass is negligible and whose force constant is k equal 50 newtons per meter as shown in the figure uh part a assuming the surface to be frictionless calculate the maximum compression of the spring after the collision so we're going to first conceptualize this as a as a frictionless surface it's all going to be just uh, uh kinetic and spring potential energy no gravitational potential energy because there's no movement up and down the various parts of the figure help us imagine what the block will do in this situation all motion takes place in the horizontal plane so we do not need to consider changes in the gravitational potential energy before the collision when the block is at a it has kinetic energy and the spring is uncompressed so the elastic potential energy stored in the system is zero therefore the total mechanical energy of the system before the collision is just one half mva squared after the coll collision when the block uh, is at c the spring is fully compressed now the block is at rest and so has zero kinetic energy the elastic potential energy stored in the system however has its maximum value of one half kx max squared where the origin of the coordinates x equals zero is chosen to be the equilibrium position of the spring and x max is the maximum compression of the spring which in the, this case happens to be uh, x sub c the total mechanical energy of the system is conserved because no non-conservative forces act on objects within the isolated system remember we talked about a frictionless surface um and part a says assuming the surface to be frictionless so there's no non-conservative forces so we identify the system to be the block and spring and model and model it as an isolated system for energy with no non-conservative forces acting on it uh, so if we uh write the conserv conservation of energy equation between points a and c we see the ch change in kinetic energy plus the change in spring potential energy is equal to zero it's all going to get converted uh, let's substitute for the en energies uh, remember it comes to a stop so the con final kinetic energy is zero 
the initial kinetic energy is one half MVA squared, and um, the potential, the spring potential energy, well, it's zero uh, initially, but it's one half kx uh, max squared at the end. All of that has to equal to zero. Um, so let's solve for x. Uh, x max is equal to m divided by k times the velocity. You, you, you know, we we transfer a VA squared, but we can pull that out of the uh, from under the radical. And let's substitute values. We get 0.8 kilograms, 50 newtons per meter, 1.2 milliseconds, and we get 0 0.15 meters. Now that's the idealized case with uh, uh, considering that it's frictionless. Now, suppose the constant force of kinetic friction acts between the block and the surface with a uh, coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.5. If the speed of the block at the moment it collides with the spring is VA equals 1.2 meters per second, what is the maximum compression X sub C on the, on the spring? Because of the friction force, we expect the compression of the spring to be smaller than in part A, because some of the block's kinetic energy is transformed to internal energy in, in the block and the surface. Now, we identify the system as the block, the surface, and the spring. This is an isolated system for energy, but now involves a non-conservative force. Um, so, let's, um, let's analyze. In this case, the mechanical energy E equals K plus mu sub S of the system and is not conserved because of a friction force uh, that acts on the block. From the particle in equilibrium model in the vertical direction, we see that uh, the normal N equals mg. Um, evaluate the magnitude of the friction force. Uh, I, I went ahead. That's F sub k equals mu k uh, times N times N. It's a coefficient of kinetic fr friction times the normal, which is mu sub k mg. Uh, the normal being mg. Um, let's write the conservation of energy equation for this situation. Change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy plus the change in internal energy equals zero. Uh, substitute the initial and final energies. The, uh, we certainly do have initial kinetic energy. Uh, no initial spring potential energy, but we do have uh, zero final kinetic energy and uh, maximum spring kinetic energy. And then we have the, uh, the change in internal energy that comes from the friction. And the friction is um, F sub K uh, times the distance. So that's mu K mg X sub C. All of that has to equal to zero. Uh, let's rearrange the terms into a quadratic equation and substitute the numeric, uh, numeric uh, there's the quadratic equation. So in this case, you know, the quadratic equation is uh, AX, AX squared plus BX plus uh, C equals zero. So the A in this case is K, the B is two mu sub K MG, and the C is minus MV A squared. Now, um, let's solve for X sub C, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know how they got this, this simplification. I came up with a different simpl simplification. I substituted values both for theirs and for mine. For mine, I just used this straightforward, uh, you know, X equals minus B plus or minus square root of uh, B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I used that formula. Um, and I got the same answer. Um, so if we, of course, when you take the square root uh, under the radical, you can get two values. Well, the, the only one that's reasonable here is the 0 0.092. The minus 0 0.25 would be on the other side of the equilibrium point, and that's not, uh, that's not correct. Um, the negative root does not apply to this situation because the block must be to the right of the origin, uh, the positive value of x when it comes to rest. Notice that the value of 0 0.092 meters is less than the distance obtained in the frictionless case of part A as we expected. Um, if you have trouble with that quadratic equation, uh, you can 
email me or uh, uh, and I'll I'll send you my derivation of it. And I even have the uh, um, I have it worked out on on my iPad. So if you want to see those notes, I'll send it to you. I might meet them up. They're kind of messy, but let me know. Okay. Uh, now let's go to the next sample. Two blocks are connected by a light string that passes over. Oh, I, I, I'll just offer it up. If, if somebody wants to get extra points and take that uh, quadratic equation and see how they come up with that x sub c, uh, if you're a good math whiz, you can try give your hand at it. And if you get it, I'll add I'll add points to the. Uh, to the quiz for chapter eight. Um, if not, you don't have to, but but uh, if you want to give it a shot, go ahead. I couldn't get it. I'll be honest with you. I couldn't get it. Uh, it seemed like a lot of work, and it's like I don't know where that minus one comes from. Anyway, let's go on with the next slide. Uh, two blocks are connected by a light string that passes over a frictionless pulley as shown in, figure, uh, shown in the figure. The block of mass M1 lies in a horizontal surface and is connected to a to a spring of force constant K. The system is released from rest when the spring is unstretched. If the hanging block of mass M2 falls a distance H before coming to rest, calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block of mass M1 and the surface. Now, two key um, words in here. Um, the system is released from rest, and then the next one, it says, uh, Mass 2 falls a distance of H before coming to rest. So the kinetic energy, initial and final, is going to be zero. Uh, the rest can suggest that the configurations of the system associated with rest are good candidates for the initial and final configurations because the kinetic energy of the system is zero for these configurations. In this situation, the system consists of two blocks, the spring, the surface and the earth. This is an isolated system with a non-conservative force acting on it. Um, we also model the sliding block as a particle in equilibrium in the vertical direction, leading to n equal uh, m1 times gravitational acceleration. So let's. Um, we need to consider two forms of potential energy for the system: gravitational and elastic. Um, so we have the gravitational acceleration, uh, the gravitational potential energy. So we have the initial, the final minus the initial, and then we have the spring potential energy, the, the final minus the initial. Um, so the change in gravitational potential energy of the system is associated with only the falling block because the vertical coordinate of the horizontally sliding block does not change. Um, we write the appropriate reduction of the conservation of energy equation. Um, so we have, we have four elements, the change in kinetic energy, the change in gravitational uh, potential energy, and the change in uh, elastic potential energy or spring potential energy, plus the internal uh, energy of the system, uh, the heat that's generated by the friction. Uh, we substitute the energies for the time interval beginning upon release and ending when the system is again at rest, noting that as the hanging block falls a distance h, the horizontal moving block moves the same distance h to the right, and the, sp the spring stretches by a distance h. So uh, there's no change in kinetic energy. If you look at the starting and ending points, um, it, for the gravitational, there's only the the initial potential energy then it drops and the by the time we finish you have spring potential energy we we stretch the spring and we have the the uh kin kinetic friction times the distance which is h because we're assuming that the string doesn't uh, stretch um let's substitute for the friction force um Let's see. So we have MGH plus one half KH, and the friction, the friction is mu sub K M1G, M1 being the, the block that's on the that's sliding, not the one that's hanging. And let's solve for mu sub K. Uh, 
mg m2g minus one half kh divided by m1g um, that's the normal now let's uh this setup represents a method of measuring the coefficient of kinetic friction between an object and some surface notice how we have solved the examples in this chapter using the energy approach we begin with the conservation of energy equation and then tailor it to the physical situation this process may include deleting terms such all such as all terms on the right hand side of the equation in this in this example um, it can also include expanding terms such as rewriting delta u the change of potential energy due to two types of potential energy in this example okay now let's look at in, interpreting energy bars the energy bars charts in the figure show three instances of in the motion of the system described in the previous example for each bar identify the configuration of the system that corresponds to the chart we've discussed energy bars in the past i guess it was in the last chapter in the top chart there is no kinetic energy in the system therefore nothing in the system is moving um, the bar chart shows that the system contains only gravitational potential energy and no inter internal energy yet which corresponds to the configuration with the darker blocks in the figure on the left and represents the instant just after the system is released. In the, bit, in the middle bar chart, the system contains four types of energy. The height of the gravitational potential energy bar is at 50%, which tells us that the hanging block has moved halfway between its position corresponding to the top bar, the top bar chart and the de position defined as y equals zero. Therefore, in this configuration, the hanging block is between the dark and light images of the hanging block, uh, the blue blocks. Uh, the system has gained kinetic energy because the blocks are moving, elastic potential energy because the spring is stretching, and internal energy because the friction between the block of mass M1 and the surface. So you can see that there's a little bit of color uh, in, in the B, uh, form of these energy bars, you see there's a little bit of each, um, a, a little bit of kinetic energy, less potential energy, gravitational potential energy, internal energy, and of course the total energy never changes. That's the whole point of this, this chapter is the conservation of energy. Um, in the bottom chart, the height of the gravitational potential energy bar is zero telling us that the hanging block is at y equals zero. There's no more potential energy. In addition, the height of the kinetic energy bar is zero, indicating that the blocks have stopped moving momentarily. Therefore, the configuration of the system is that shown by the light images of the, of the blocks. The height of the elastic potential energy bar is high because the spring has stressed its maximum amount. The height of the internal energy bar is higher than in the middle bar because the block of mass M has continued to slide over the surface and has warmed up. Now, if there were no friction, uh, that internal energy would be zero and the elastic potential energy would be exactly that of the total energy. Now this ends the section on changes in mechanical energy for non-conservative forces. Next, we will discuss section 8.5, power, and that will be the last section for this chapter.